Absolutely. I think with blogs, I mean, I can't tell you enough. Like, I feel like every year um, that I, or every semester, Courtney, I've done this presentation. I feel like, yeah, look at all the opportunities that you have here with your blog. And it keeps on getting bigger and bigger. And so I actually have a couple of new stories that I wanted to share with you. But um, um, as Dr. Childers says, I'm from the University of Louisville. Um, here is our picture of the beautiful campus. Um, we are the Cardinals. Um, Louisville's known for a lot of different things. Um, if you haven't been to the city, it's known for, um, of course, that big horse racing event that happens every year with lots of hats and mint juleps, where Churchill Downs is like right across the way um, from the university. But we're also um, very, you know, n much known for basketball. Um, of course, we won the national championships last year, go cards. So it's been very exciting um, to. Um, be part of that culture. So if you haven't been to Louisville, here is just a screenshot. Um, so this is a little bit about me. Um, as Dr. Chiller says, um, I got my PhD from the University of Tennessee. Um, I'm really proud of the time that I spent at UT. Great location, great school, great professors. You guys are really fortunate to be there. Um, but I did get my master's degree at Southern California in Strategic Public Relations. And I know when I taught at UT, um, that was the year that Lane Kiffin left to go to SC and got in some trouble there. And I'm sorry, guys, I am a Gator. I got my bachelor's of P you know, in PR at Florida. So I'm sorry, but I, you know, I, I feel like I can't lose. <laughs> but um, I actually, the, the reason why I went to Florida was I got a full scholarship in track and field. So I used to throw things for a living. I guess that's the most popular <laughs> way to say it. But yeah, I, I was a co uh, collegiate athlete for 10 years, um, four-time All-American. Um, and it was really track that actually got me involved in blogging. And um, I do a lot of work in social media crisis, PR, um, but I, feel free to contact me. I definitely want to be viewed as a resource for you guys. I want to help out as much as you can. Um, Mark Schaefer is a great, you know, professional, and you guys should definitely, you know, follow him, connect with him, ask his insights and expertise on blogging. But um, the social media community is really great. Um, we're very um, engaged, and we want to help out young professionals. So feel free to connect with me. Some of you have already on Twitter. I'm pretty much on everything, so um, feel free to contact me. And my blog URL is at the bottom. So um, I write a lot about um, track, um, sports, crisis, social media. I do occasionally write about food and travels, but um, it's kind of a mixture. Um, and as you guys have, you know, talked a little bit about the importance of blog, you guys are going to be starting your assignment on and turning it in right Tuesday. Right. Um, I think blogging is probably the most essential thing that you can do to kind of maintain and manage your reputation. Um, and I've been blogging now for seven years. Um, and how did I get started with my blogging? You're probably wondering why Val Kilmer, the actor is on. Um, well, I, I started my own personal website back in 90, oh, 96. And it was basically a fan Kilmer, Val Kilmer fan site. So please don't judge me. It's because, you know, don't look at him right now. He's, you know, um, look it back, you know, Top Gun, and I was in junior high, so. Yeah, cool, awesome, okay, I'm not dating myself, yay. <laughs> but I use actually my blog and web, well, actually my website to promote myself through track and field um, and high school, and I through the shot put, as I said, and um, I continued on with this path in college where I was able to create newsletters, um, promote my activities as a track and field athlete, both in Florida and Southern Cal. I did throw um, for the Trojans for a year, got to be an All-American school record holder in the shot put, um, but I was able to use it as commentary for track and field sites. And I didn't know at the time with Florida that this was what PR professionals did. And um, I actually started off as a psych major, but I felt that this was definitely my calling. And I love new technology. Um, get me in a room, like a technology room or a shoe room, I'm going to be happy in either one of those places. Um, but I retired from track in 2006, and I really thought, okay, I know I'm going to go in for a PhD. What am I going to talk about? So I really wanted to talk about PR, write about that, um, sports PR in particular, um, and new media. And then it kind of translated um, at Tennessee to crisis communications, which um, now – I still do. And I've been doing it for seven years. I've, I've talked about social media, crisis communications, anything that happens in the news that you're just like, okay, I can't believe that happened. I usually talk about it. <laughs> so, um, but it's been really growing since, you know, um, the time that I started it and it's been uh, used as a reading list for several PR classes and programs, which I'm kind of excited about. Um, and it's been ranked as, you know, some of the top bloggers to follow for professors, which I, I feel really honored. I mean, I, I just do this for fun. And so um, it's really 
really been rewarding for me to kind of experience that. Um, but blogging, I think, to you know, most of the programs that we see, you know, for PR and advertising, you usually have a blog, you know, assignment in some capacity, especially with new media and a social media class. And blogging is considered to be a traditional social media practice um, because it's so established. I mean, compared to other platforms, you know, that you see with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, you still see those kind of emerging. I mean, Facebook and Twitter are pretty established, but blogging is really traditional. And many brands have blogs, many agencies, many professionals have blogs. So pretty much everyone has a platform where they're able to share their point of view, tell their stories, as well as, you know, communicate about what the brand is doing and making announcements to engage in their communities. And so I would say more than ever, I mean, as Dr. Chilius highlighted with Mark Schaefer's um, post, which I, th- and comments through email, which I think is really important. Employers today expect young professionals to one, know how to blog because you may be asked to write a blog or corporate blog, et cetera. Um, what are the characteristics, how to promote it? What, it? what does it mean to have a content marketing you know, strategy or what's a ca- editorial calendar? Um, these are just some of the things that employers are expecting you to know, and as well as how to professionally conduct yourself on a blog, as well as integrate innovative ways to, for storytelling on the behalf of the brand or organization or yourself. Um, you guys have your personal brand when it comes to your blog. You are in control of what you post about it. And there's things that you have to kind of take into consideration before you even start blogging. And I think that's really important to kind of think about that first and then decide, okay, how do I want to see myself in the world? How do I want to present myself in the field? And how am I going to separate myself from other potential candidates from Auburn, Georgia, Florida, SC, et cetera, and other universities? You have to kind of take those into considerations. Um, and so blogging, you know, uh, what is it? I mean, you guys are pretty much know what a blog is. It's, you know, from a brand's perspective, it is, it's either written by one person or a team. I mean, this is usually kind of the role of a public relations professional, but what the, you have to kind of consider is figuring out, okay, what amount, how many times do we need to update our content? There's some people that just updated constantly, but that's basically because of their community. They want constant contact. I usually try to blog at least a couple of times a week. I mean, I don't blog every day unless like something comes up and I'm like, okay, I got to blog on this. I mean, it's just essential. Um, But usually a blog has a consistent theme and voice. And that's something that you really want to make sure that you highlight in your blog when you're starting out is making sure that you determine how do you are going to communicate information, how are you going to share information with other people, what are some of the things that you're going to make sure that you want to get across, and it's in your voice. Um, For me, like one of the things that I initially realized is I'm I'm a pretty happy person. That's probably because I, you know, coffee is a major food group for me, but um, uh, I, I always try to be happy. I always try to stay positive, and I have, you know, various happy faces all over my post, but that's me. You know, that's who I am, and so be yourself. Um, but you also want to consider too what other things you can add to extend the conversations um, in terms of adding multimedia, adding in um, pictures and other additional elements to kind of make sure that your argument is you know strong in your blog post. Um, and I think blog, I mean, blogging is just such an important area to kind of consider. It really does humanize your brand because it does provide people with another element and another layer to a reputation and per- perception. And I find that by reading blogs and various things, you know, that other organizations are doing, I get a sense of the individuals who are part and who basically are behind the logo and what they're sharing. And I really like Edelman Digital's blog because I was able to see, oh, here's, you know, Michael's, you know, post, or, oh, here's David's post on social media. And then when you actually get to meet them in person, you're like, oh, wow, you, you are, you're real, you know? So it humanizes the brand with a blog, but it also, again, showcases your point of view. And that's what employers are looking at that, you know, I think it's really important when you're kind of designing your blog, think about, okay, what has anyone, what have other people done? What have been things that they've done that, they haven't addressed, maybe possibly that's something that I could showcase. So kind of figure out your niche in the area. Um, And you definitely want to make sure that you establish your blog as kind of like the hub of your reputation online. That is the information that you want people to direct, you know, 
be directed towards from social media. So for example, a lot of you are on Twitter, you might want to consider sharing your blog post saying, hey, you know, this is the post that I wrote about today. So that it gets more people aware of your point of view. They get to hear your insights. They get to see what you're doing and it derives interest. You know, it's amazing to see how cross promoting on these various social media platforms platforms, you know, and how that integ is integrated back to your blog really does help. And I've done that in the last several years with Twitter. And I can't tell you guys how that's helped me out in terms of getting new readers as well as getting new opportunities, which I never thought would be possible. Uh, but it does also, a, bl a blog does allow you to promote your expertise in an area. And when I started at Tennessee and started writing about um, social media, I realized very quickly that there really weren't that many bloggers talking about social media and crisis communications from a doctoral student's point of view. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. And it, it was able, like I was able to kind of connect with fellow practitioners. I was able to connect with fellow researchers and people all around the world with this one tool. So there's a huge amount of opportunities involved with blogging. And so I wanted to kind of share with you a couple of them at the moment. Um, there are definitely job opportunities. Um, when I first started my blog at SC, I actually got approached by Fleshman Hilliard um, for a sports PR job because they said, okay, I saw your blog on sport, like a particular crisis. I think it was um, even back then, I think it was Tiger Woods or something, but they said, we really like what you wrote and we want to contact you. And that really kind of woke me up. I was like, wow, that's really cool. They just saw what I wrote on my blog. They liked my point of view. So they're going to hire me a job. But then I told them I was going on for a PhD at Tennessee. And they said, well, if you, you know, the PhD thing doesn't work out, contact us. But again, agencies are looking for bloggers. They're looking for people, you know, who are writing about various point of views. Um, Heineken and sharing your insights and presenting abroad. And, um, I tell, I actually told my students this yesterday about an opportunity. You just, again, never know who, um, is going to be reading your blog and, um, Heineken to give you guys a background story, did this Super Bowl campaign called give yourself a good name back in 2009. It was not a successful campaign commercial at all. And so I did a case study on it and presented it at a conference that was going to be in Amsterdam. But I wrote a blog post about it and I talked about the different ways that Heidekin could have addressed this differently. So the next day I got an email from the general manager at Heineken and he basically said, we'd love to hear your insights. So we'd love for you to come by and present them and take a tour of our Heineken experience in Amsterdam. So it wasn't just the general manager of just, you know, Heineken USA. It was the main one, you know, at Heineken globally. So, I mean, I was like, whoa, they kind of picked up on that. So again, you just never know who's going to be looking at your blog and what opportunities arise there. Um, I've had some consulting opportunities based on my blog because people have seen what I've written about, particularly in crisis communications. I've been able to be um, giving keynote speeches, you know, on the topic, um, you know, paid speaking engagements. And I've been on also on a show as a guest panelist and even a host um, on the crisis show. So these were just a few opportunities that I got in the process. But I did get some recent ones that I wanted to share with you guys, too. And um, one was able to contribute to social media campaigns and, you know, get mentions on other blogs. Um, at Louisville, we had a pretty good team um, in place. And I talked about how we have a very strong social media presence um, on, at the university and at athletics. So I was able to talk about what Louisville was doing in terms of social media. So that's been getting a lot of other mentions, a lot of traffic related to that. And then people have said, hey, you know, what are your comments, you know, related to this? And, you know, you, it's there's a lot of dialogue and conversations that are emerging from there. I also was able to create professional partnerships with new applications. And we do have um, a formal partnership with Pitch, P-T-C-H, great cool app. Um, you found it by a couple of people from DreamWorks. Uh, we were able to use and build this par partnership with the Pitch. I mean, it's been a year old, but I was able to write a couple of blogs about it and get traffic there. And people were like, I want to learn more about Pitch and what Louisville is doing. I'm like, and so I'm like, okay, here's more resources, whatever. So both of these are kind of sparked conversations based on what Louisville's done. And these were topics that I covered in my blog. So there's a lot of possibilities uh, for what you can write about on, you know, your blog. There's a lot of possibilities and you just never know, again, who's going to look at it. Um, and then a couple of other examples, um, I was able to go on a paid speaking engagement to Dolly in China, and I was contacted earlier this year um, by this conference, and they said, okay, well, we want to hear your insights about social media um, and storytelling in particular and strategic communications, and we'll pay your way for it. 
So I'm like, okay, I get to go to China to talk about social media where a lot of the platforms there are banned. Uh, but I was able to blog about it because they said, we saw what you were doing, not only in research, but what you were writing on your blog. So it's international experiences as well. I mean, you just, again, never know who's going to look at your blog. Um, and then the other thing too, I don't know if Dr. Childers mentioned this, but I am actually a Google Glass Explorer. So yes, I look kind of like a, you know, a cyborg, I guess you could say. Um, but I was able to be part of the Explore program because I was blogging about it. I, of course, got into the program. I, I have glass. I'm actually wearing glass at the moment. Um, so I have questions about that after you know this lecture. I'd be more than happy to address them. But I've been able to share my insights of how I'm using glass in the classroom, how I'm using glass you know, um, to basically do guest lectures or um, to you know use in research. And so I'm able to get that point of view across. And so I've had a, a huge jump in traffic as well from that. So it's again, about looking at your experiences, continuing to write it, and it just kind of builds up on each other. So these are just kind of some recent developments I've had. So you, the possibilities I, are endless when it comes to blogging. I mean, there's so many things that I attribute them as like, I didn't get this, you know, before, but now I have a blog, I was writing about it. The, these are the opportunities that I was able to get, you know, give it. So you know, definitely, you know, reach for the stars when it comes to blogging and you never know what might happen. You know, there's a lot of possibilities here. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Google Glass is one cool tool, even though, you know, there's a couple, you know, people are like, that is so cool. Or that looks kind of like, you look like a cyborg or people say, you look like the guy from Star Trek data. And I'm like, yes, but it's still cool, you know? So, um, but yeah, I'd be more than happy to share with you what, um, the glass is like definitely for sure. And I can actually show you guys how it works afterwards because I'm actually wearing it right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, just keep calm and blog on. I mean, the biggest thing I think, uh, the hardest thing that I think students, you know, and I, I run into this with my own students, they're just so intimidated. They're like, oh my God, what if people don't like what I'm writing about or how do I get started? How do I maintain this? But it's about making the first initial step um, to blog. I mean, that's the most important thing that you have to kind of consider. It's just to, you know, take a deep breath. But if you have a strategy in place, you're going to be fine. And so there's certain things that I think Dr. Childers has, you know, for, you know, in relations to your blog and assignment, you know, that you would want you to make sure that you have in place um, in your blog. You definitely want to have a title. You want something that reflects who you are. For me, my blog is just Karen Karen's PR and social media blog. It's simple. It's to the point. It's a personal blog, but you can have, you know, your own formal title. You could have your personal name attached to it, you know, et cetera. You just want to have something that's unique and care, like characteristic of who you are as an individual person. Contact information. Um, I actually have one email designated for just email via blog. I don't give out my Louisville email address. Um, so, and I don't give out, of course, my physical address. So you just want to make sure that you're protective, you know, of your contact information. Categories of interest. I mean, this is really something that once you decide what you want to blog about. And so if you want to do social media, UT, or, and maybe nonprofit, you know, you just have to kind of think about what's your angle, what's going to be your focus for your uh, blog. Um, a site traffic widget. I mean, you can definitely do blog analytics um, through various sites. I use Fidget. Um, it's free. It's a free plugin that you can include, um, but you could do Google Analytics, kind of see to where people are coming in from, what keywords they're searching for, what time of day people are coming in, as well as what are the posts that are most popular. And there's some of my blog posts that I'm like, really, this is my most blog, popular blog post. And one actually was a KFC crisis that happened earlier this year with um, this, I think it was like liver that was actually, you know, put into um, like deep fried or something and it ended up in chicken McNuggets or, or something along those lines in the UK. I mean, it was kind of, you know, not, the most pleasing thing to see, but it was a, to spread out virally on social media. But that was, that's one of my most popular posts. I'm like, really? Okay. Well, everyone might want to look at interesting food safety issues, <laughs> but you want to have the connection to where direct people, where people can go to follow you on Twitter, um, Instagram. There's several widgets that you can put out there. Um, as, and make sure that you have shared options because people like sharing, you know, various blog posts if they think it's relevant. And, and you know, you want to kind of see how many shares people are doing on certain blog posts. Um, 
you know, just to kind of give you an idea of what people like, what people are looking for. Um, and then links to other blogs, um, other professional organizations I've listed here, PRSA, Advertising Age, Mashable is good. Um, you might want to look at other PR firms, both locally in Knoxville, as well as um, nationally and internationally. Um, and fellow students, you guys are, you know, the elite eight, you know, there's eight of you guys in the class. So you want to, you know, support each other and definitely promote each other, um, read what you guys are all doing. I mean, you guys are going to have different perspectives. So you really want to kind of, you know, look at those possibilities there. Oh, and then the other thing is have your resume on board. Still brands still like the traditional resumes, but you want to make sure that you have a page dedicated to that. So people can kind of sense, okay, who is this student? Who is... What, what are their interests? What are, what's their experience? How many internships have they gotten? So you want to still make sure that you have that traditional component of an online portfolio right there. Um, I think here's the most important thing. I would definitely spend, you know, you have until what, Tuesday to do the blogging assignment. Really spend some time thinking about this. Determine what your overall goal and purpose is for your blog. Um, and I think that's important. This will set the standard for how you're going to position yourself. What is your goal? Is it to get a job? Is it to establish yourself in the field? Is it to um, get certain opportunities? You know, what is your purpose? Or you're just passionate about writing. You have to kind of look at what you want to get out of this blog. Um, and it's a long-term commitment because if you start a blog for a class, you know, if you gain a lot of readers through this, that's one thing. But if you want to... Um, you know, kind of build upon this, it's, it's, it, it's kind of, have, you have to go through a certain habit. And I know um, Dr. Chillers, you had Mark Schaefer come in and he has a process, you know, and a procedure that he does in terms of writing posts. You just have to make sure that you are committed to posting a certain number of comments, writing about certain topics and stuff like that. Um, and I think you have to kind of think about how this blog will help your reputation online. Um, for me, my blog has served me in a way that, of course, you know, especially with practitioners, I'm able to communicate what I'm doing in research, you know, basically in terms that, you know, can be applied. Um, it's a wonderful way for me to kind of say, okay, here's what I'm doing in social media crisis on the research side, but hey, here are the implications. Here's how this research could be used. Or, you know, I can write about my point of view saying, okay, this is a case study that's happening right now that we need to be talking about. And I just wrote a blog post today about the whole issue with Johnny Manziel at Texas A&M about how from a crisis standpoint, there's a lot of issues that we have to talk about. And so that's a case study that I'm going to be using in class. But um, it's something that it, it allows you to kind of determine what you're going to be writing about, what you're passionate about, and what is going to be your point of view. And for me, my point of view with my blog is to be a professor, to be a researcher, but also to be a human being, you know, and um, I like Angry Birds. I like Doctor Who. I, you know, love coffee. I mean, I'm human, you know, but I want to be able to use my blog to do that. I mean, I, the, the thing is, I've seen so many blogs that you're like, okay, I need a source looking at all these words, you know, from fellow professors myself, but I felt that's not me. That's not who I want to communicate. And you have to kind of also determine what platform you're going to be using. Um, Dr. Chillers, do you have them to, like use WordPress only? Or are they available to choose other platforms? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm actually a huge supporter of WordPress. That's what I use. Um, I've, you know, Tumblr has been one of those, um, sites for me where you either love it or you kind of want to be like, grr, you know, because it sometimes doesn't work. Um, I've never had blogger, but, um, I, I would strongly recommend WordPress. There's a lot of cool plugins that you can do. Um, and then also what tools are you going to do to enhance the content of your blog? How are you going to strategize? How are you going to use social media to promote it? Uh, what are some other tools, you know, you want to use for your blog? Um, and other tips, um, read other blogs to be successful. I would say Mark Shaver has a great blog. Um, I would also recommend looking at Melissa Agnes. Um, I can share her Twitter handle as well. She is a social media and crisis consultant um, up in Montreal. Awesome blog. Um, and I love how it's everything is pink. I mean, she just rocks the pink. But she really shares some really good, concise, but really thorough points about crisis communications. But she does a really good job in making sure that she, you know, has 
that niche of social media and crisis. And she really does a good job with it. Uh, determine, again, what your area of specialization expertise is going to be. And so you want to be able to look at what people are doing right now, but what can you offer that's new? Um, I feel like um, if anyone's seen the Disney movie Ratatouille with um, the food critic Anton Ego, it's like, okay, what does the chef have that's new? And brands and PR firms are, and agencies are like that. They're like, okay, what does this student have that they can bring that's new? And so you really have to determine what your area of specialization is going to be and then just kind of tap into that before someone else does. Um, definitely write catchy headlines. Write unique, strong content that characterizes your point of view. Again, you, you're hearing me say this over and over again. Point of view is very key. Making sure that you share exactly what you think about a certain situation and back it up with, you know, your perspectives, your research. Um, and proper grammar and spelling is key. First impressions matter. So really, really check on those. Double check, triple check, you know, et cetera. Um, and write, write, write some more. I mean, the best way to learn how to blog is to write, to be consistent. And you may have success early on. It may take some time, but you really want to make sure that you practice, you write. I mean, I can tell you, if you guys want to look at some, you know, really, you know, early blog posts that I did, you know, back in the day in 2006, you know, um, I look back, I'm like, wow, that, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I look at some of my earlier blog posts. I'm like, okay, that was enough of that. It's, it distracts from the now, but it, it definitely is a good reflection because I'm able to see how my writing has changed and evolved since then. So um, these are just a couple of things to kind of look at and consider. Um, be aware also, I would say the biggest thing too, from the legal standpoint, be aware of what you can and cannot post on, um, your blog, including like copyright photos, documents, um, videos, et cetera. You want to make sure that you get permission or you use kind of like the, um, free stock photos that are available. There's a lot of sites available for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Dr. Schiller's, I actually have an article that came across PR daily a few weeks ago related to Google images and what people are finding out, you know, the hard way about using them on blogs. So I can definitely send that to you for, to share with your students, just to kind of keep, you know, you just don't want to get in trouble on your blog. Um, have a schedule too with writing your blog. I mean, there's going to be certain times of the day that, you know, really work well for you. Um, I usually try to do it either in the evening. That seems to be my time where I'm kind of, you know, um, thinking about what I'm going to do with my blog and share it too. share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, get people's insights on what they like, what they don't like. And you might get some really good ideas. You might, you know, think, oh, wow, I didn't address this particular issue. So, you know, this is something that maybe I could do another blog post um, and analyze your web traffic re results too, to see what people are catching on, what they're talking about the most. Um, and then that'll help guide you in creating more content. So it kind of builds upon itself really. Um, and just come some final thoughts before, you know, I close and, you know, for questions and answer um, questions and comments. Um, blogging is a great way to distinguish yourself in the PR and advertising community. It's still a traditional form of social media, in my opinion, but it still is such an important, you know, tool to kind of establish yourself online. And you are your own PR person. Um, so who better to promote the content and your insights? And it's the day and age that we're living in. Everyone expects to have a blog a point of view that they're able to maintain and sustain and talk about what they're experts in. Um, and it really is a great tool to practice your writing. You really have to kind of think about, okay, this is going to be for, I don't know how many people are going to be viewing this. You know, I want to make sure it's good. So you want to make sure that you spend the time and resources available and definitely think before you post again, you never know who's going to be reading your blog post. Um, I've been amazed with just looking at my web traffic to see the readership that I've had over the years. I have a big following and, um, surprisingly China. Um, but I have also people coming in from the UK around the U S South America. I mean, it's been very cool to kind of see the impact of where my blog has been reading, being read. Um, I even thought it was cool. I had a hit from Iceland. I'm like, yeah, I'm in Iceland. That's so cool. You know, it's just really exciting to kind of see the traffic and it just, you know, you keep on building on it. You just never know who's going to be looking at it. And then write, write some more. Um, I know that you could probably have set, you know, expectations on how many posts you need to write, but, um, I think the more you write, the better it is, the more you learn about it and you can get the sense of what content works, what people look at as well as finding your own voice. So I think that's something to kind of take away from this whole entire experience. Um, so I have some resources, blog resources. I mentioned, um, I have Melissa Agnes's, um, blog uh, information as well as Mark Shavers. I would also look at, um, Brian Solis, Jeremiah Uyang, um, 
Jason Falls, I would say too, it's a great resource. Um, Jason is actually based out here in Louisville and he has done an exceptional job with his um, website and blog, Social Media Explorer. He's definitely one to follow. And then Shanali Burke is a PR practitioner. Um, she was actually the crisis communication specialist um, during the um, representing ASPA. Um, oh, ASCPA. Yeah. Um, during the Michael Vick dogfighting scandal in 2007. So she was basically the specialist that they, you know, brought in board to represent them. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, a lot of social media sites you can look at. Mashable's great. I like social media influence. Um, they're really a good resource. I would say too, um, with, um, blogs particular, you might want to look at the UK. I mean, there's, and, um, other countries as well to see what works for them and what's not, because we're becoming more of a global society, especially, you know, with technology, we're able to um, connect and communicate with others and share audiences. 